What's up guys, this is Jay from Encounter Wargaming and today I'm going to let you in on my secret strategies on how to beat Adam's Arcanists in our next encounter. So, hopefully I can get some of your help uh, beating Adam's Arcanists as well. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> So there it is guys, my expanded Malifo crew. So as of right now, this is all the models I have painted and ready to play with on the tabletop. Uh, just an expansion onto my McMorning crew, I added the Nicodem crew and the, a bunch of canine remains. So uh, if you guys haven't seen those videos, go back and check those out. Uh, I'll put a card up right at the top there. Um, and yeah, so the plan here is basically to sort of create a conversation with you guys. Like, I want to tell you guys what I plan to do with these models, and then hopefully you guys can put in the comments below um, things I may be missing, um, things I can, different combinations I can do with these models that I may not have thought of. Basically, I'm asking for your help so that I can kick Adam's ass in the next battle report. So you guys have seen his rail crew. You know what he's adding to his force. Uh, and possibly you've heard his plans so I'm hoping now that I can tell you guys my plans and you can help me out so anyway here we are so I've added now the punk zombies um, Nicodem and his crew and all these doggies along the front here uh, so I guess uh, I'll start by going on things that I learned from the last battle report and ways that I think I'm gonna be able to incorporate these new models into the next battle report so that I can sort of maximize what they can do. So first of all, I gotta say that we were recommended after the last battle report in the comments section of checking out the Gaining Ground schemes, Gaining Grounds 2016 schemes. We were just using the rulebook schemes. Uh, so we will take your suggestion and we will likely be using those for the next battle report. Uh, also, we were recommended the General Upgrade Kit. Now, I haven't been able to do that, so, like, to get those cards, so at this point, um, I'm just using the upgrades that came in the box sets. So maybe you guys can help me out to use those to the max of my ability, but uh, right now, I think I've sort of figured out a good synergy that I think might work on the tabletop. Again, I've only had two games of Malifaux ever, so... Um, this next one up against Adam will be my third game ever, so I'm hoping that I can see these synergies for what they are just by reading the cards, but we'll see how it works out on the table, I guess. So, a couple things I need to work on. First off, I have to remember Catalyst. Apparently whenever an enemy activates within 8 inches, they take damage. I think in our battle report, Adam was just taking damage at the end of the turn, but it turns out that with Nick, with I almost said Nickelodeon, with McMorning and Sebastian, um, you create this little bubble of like poison evilness, this like aura. If you keep them together, they they even it makes that aura even more powerful. So not only at the end of the turn, because of that, um, if they're within six inches of Sebastian. So if I run him a couple inches ahead of uh, McMorning there, uh, McMorning's range being eight, that. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into some of the other upgrades, which are also eight. Um, so I'm seeing a, a synergy here. Um, at the end of the turn, they take three damage from poison instead of one. But because of Catalyst, if they activate within an eight-inch bubble, they take the poison immediately as soon as activating, which is crazy. And they're going to take three for being within Sebastian instead of one, if they have one, that is. So... Or if they take six and they take two extra, it's two extra either way, I think, if I'm reading this correctly. So if they take, you know, six poison because of McMorning, then uh, they'll be taking eight because Sebastian's there too, which is crazy. I think that's fucking crazy cool. Now, something I should mention is that my flesh construct is embalmed, which means that when he activates, he should take damage from... He starts the game with five poison on him, or if I summon him in, he starts with five poison on him, which I think actually makes him great for summoning. Um, by summoning him in with five poison, then as soon as he activates, he can heal right up. That's crazy. So Adam does some crap to him. At the beginning of my next turn, as soon as he activates, he can heal up to five, I think? Oh, he only heals one. 
but he starts with a five. Okay, so he can only heal one at a time, but that's fine. Um, but McMorning's Expunge, I believe it's Expunge, um, makes people take up to nine poison. Yes, up to nine damage from poison. So right away, if he, him just being within eight inches of McMorning and activating makes him basically heal right up, which is crazy. So there's no reason why I shouldn't run these three models just chilling together. Plus the little Chihuahua, a couple of, a couple of inches ahead. Because of course, he can give everybody within two inches of him two poison. So now we're getting somewhere, right? I'm seeing some synergies here. Now, I'm not entirely sure um, how to maximize tactical options with the nurses. I haven't quite got the hang of them yet, but I think I have some ideas, and I'll get to those in a little bit. But aside from uh, Catalyst and uh, Induction, I have to make sure I always remember those rules, because they're going to help not only my Flesh Construct, but they're going to really hurt my enemy in giving me a nice little poison bubble. Uh, I also have to remember, I remember Expunge. Expunge. So, uh, this is a zero action that McMorning gets. It's right there. If I can get this a better view, if you guys can actually read this. So casting seven of crows, target number 14, uh, against the target model's defense. They suffered the amount of damage equal to their current poison condition value. And with all the stuff I have here on the table, um, with the canine remains and stuff, their attacks giving poison, the chihuahua just being near you gives you poison, the nurses can stick you with a syringe that makes you poison, basically I can just load shit up with poison, and then basically just use this zero action, and goodbye, see you later. Or in the case of the flesh construct, I can use the zero action and whoop, he's healed. What do you know? Because I remember last game, we had put quite a bit of poison on the flesh construct. And uh, he was just gaining back one a turn, which really wasn't going to keep him alive. But, but this expunge, expunge, that's the key. That's what I was missing. He can just like, for free every turn, Mc McMorning can do his normal actions. Then he can just go, yeah, and I'm going to heal the flesh construct while I'm at it. Beauty. Love it. It also means he can deal up to 9 damage to an enemy in a turn, so if I get enough poison conditions on there, it's gonna hurt, I think. Which leads me to the next point, the hounds. All my doggies here. So, at first glance, canine remains don't really look that awesome. They have one melee action, which is only a 1-3-4 damage, and it has a 1 inch range. Kinda sucky, right? But that's because before I was using only one. Now I have six, as you can see. Because of their hunting dog ability, the enemy suffers negative one defense for each dog within one inch. Now, they have a one inch combat range, so if I'm attacking with one, I might as well attack with four. You know what I mean? Giving them negative four defense, and that many more attacks from my side at them. Now, speaking of all this poison a minute ago, um, the dogs not only can add a poison for every attack that they succeed, basically like, there, I'll show you guys the card. What am I doing here? So here we go. Melee four of crows, so there's always a crow was attached to any of their melee attacks. So for one crow, they automatically gets infect, which means after succeeding, the target gains plus one poison condition, the number of times equal to the number of crows in the final duel total. So, if I get two crows, that means they take two poison, but it also means that they get rabies, which means for the rest of the game, the model, the enemy model counts as a beast and suffers negative one willpower, which could be really interesting uh, when involving other casting. Um, so, again, with the willpower, I haven't really figured out the synergy there, but basically, the dog's, dog attacks someone, it's adding one poison, just for attacking them. And, because of their scent of death rule, this model may take a two charge action as a one action when targeting a model affected by the poison condition. So really, not only am I giving poison for the Chihuahua, uh, and possibly the nurses, but then the Chihuahua runs up, poisons everybody within two inches, and that means all these doggies now 
can do a full charge for one action. So that's giving them two melee attacks, which will give you more poison. And on top of that, because they have a second action they can perform, they could do another attack. Or if they're really far away from the Chihuahua, they can do a walk and then a charge action for one AP and still attack you twice, possibly giving you two more poison. And if I put a bunch of these together, it's less to your defense, which means it's even more likely that these attacks are going to go through. And with more of them, you're just going to keep adding more poison, and it's just ridiculous. And the McMorning comes by with a zero action, and your guy just dies from being poisoned. Or he activates near Sebastian, and he dies from being poisoned. It's crazy. I'm loving this. Egg sponge, baby. That's a good zero action. I think I'll be doing that more often. So, my plan right now, since I don't have enough models to maximize Nicodem's summoning capabilities, and also, I want to get pretty good with McMorning. I don't want to quite move on to Nicodem yet. Yes, he's my favorite model. Yes, he is awesome. But, I believe it or not, even with all these models right here, I don't have enough to maximize Nicodem's summoning capabilities. Best summoner in the game. So, I'm basically just going to take Nicodem and his totem and his henchman out of the equation for now. I will be using them hopefully for certain scenarios and stuff, but again, we're still just learning this game. So based on the models I have here, this is one I want to be rolling with. So, at 50 soul stones, let me just clear these off and give you guys sort of an idea of uh, what I'm going to do here. So for 50 soul stones, I'm going to start with McMorning. Now, I have given him, again, I am just working with the upgrades off the uh, box set that, he, that came with his box. So I'm working off Moonlighting and Evidence Tampering for three Soul Stones. Uh, moonlighting, I currently don't have any guild models, but this upgrade allows me to summon Canine Remains, which is wicked cool. So. Roadkill Scholar, within 8 inches, again with this 8 inch bubble. I'm going to keep, i got to make sure I remember this 8 inch bubble for a bunch of his abilities. Uh, if an undead model is killed by the poison condition, living or undead, sorry, anybody dies within 8 inches, friend, foe, doesn't matter. Living, undead, doesn't matter. Dies from the poison condition. This model may immediately summon a canine remains into base contact with it and no corpse marker is placed. Beautiful. So with all this poison I was just talking about with the canines and the nurses and the chihuahua just giving you poison and then expunge, he just makes you take all this poison and at the end of the turn Sebastian makes you take even more poison and pretty much if you die I get to turn you into another dog, which makes my pack of dogs even better. Also he gains an extra ability to the expunge trigger, I'm already talking about how awesome expunge is. Get this. Now obviously if you die from, you know, just a normal poison at the end of the turn, or Sebastian giving you extra poison, or whatever, I can just turn you into a cannon remains. But, kaboom, if you die from expunge, ha 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 ha, as long as I have a crow, uh, means after reducing a living or undead target to zero wounds, so with expunge, which I believe also has an 8 inch range, if I was correct on that, um, you turn the guy into a flash construct. A free flesh construct, just for using Expunge, which apparently it's in my interest to use all the time anyway. So how freaking awesome is that for one Soul Stone? If used properly, if I get this poison going right, boom, there's going to be some Frankenstein monsters popping out. And again, pops out with five poison already on it, which is going to allow for some awesome healing. It's going to make it really hard to take down Flesh Construct. So the second upgrade I gave him is Evidence Tampering, which I used in the last battle report. Just because I think it's a pretty good upgrade. I mean, yes, it's two Soul Stones, which apparently is super high for an upgrade, but you guys will see here that I have extra Soul Stones to play with after I throw in all these models and stuff. Um, so anyway, I think it's worth two Soul Stones, if not for nothing more than that zero action that allows me to use my melee attack uh, at an extra six inches. So... Normally, I think McMorning's melee attack is a 2-inch range, if I'm correct. Oh, it's actually a 1-inch range, so that's fine. So basically, like, it being a 0 action, 
that means he can move in. He can charge in, do two attacks, then for his third AP, do another attack, and then for the zero action, do another attack. I don't know, people were telling me Morning is not a combat monster, but seeing him in our last battle and then adding this to him? Huh. I think he can be a combat monster. Also, this gives him evidence tampering, um, which allows me basically that sort of last turn I win situation. Um, where basically at the end of the game I can just turn a bunch of scheme markers that were within four inches into mine instead of the enemies, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, so Moonlighting and Evidence Tampering. Moonlighting just making my Expunged Trigger way better. <laughs> way better. Um, and yeah, Evidence Tampering just for that extra zero action. Totally worth two Soul Stones. If I, down the road, find out it's not worth two Soul Stones, then whatever, I'll just add two to my pool. But next, of course, McMorning will be accompanied by his Chihuahua. Because, yeah, poison and... Uh, this totem can only be used for McMorning. Apparently, he really likes doggies. So, yeah. So basically, the Chihuahua is just there to give out poison to everybody within two inches. Basically, he's just going to run up in front, run right into the middle of the enemy, give everybody poison, so that all the other doggies can then do their one action point charge, which is wicked cool. And uh, then after all that's over with, maybe McMorning can just go, uh, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then for zero action, you die. Yeah, sounds cool. I think it's going to be wicked awesome. Plus, um, the Chihuahua can also make a model. Let's see if I got this correct. Yes. The Chihuahua. Smell weakness. Alright, so the target gains the following condition for the rest of the game. Susceptible. This model loses any immunity to the poison condition. Sacrifice this model. So in other words, for one action, I can just kill the Chihuahua, and your guy that was immune to poison is no longer immune to poison. So that's kind of handy to have, I think. Plus, for guys that already aren't immune to poison, he's just going to be dishing out two poison just because he's smelly. Which is wicked cool. Uh, I like that since Adam has some wards and stuff. You can, maybe you guys can correct me whether or not that can take away the wards um, that remove conditions. Does that only? So would that make them susceptible to poison, even though they're immune to all conditions, or would that uh, not apply since it's not a rule that specifically says that they're immune to poison? It says that they're immune to all conditions. So that's a question out to you guys. Maybe you can put in the comments um, whether or not that's applicable. Next, we're taking Sebastian, this little guy with his bones. Ah, love this model. So much fun. It's a chubby little guy with a fucking saw. Cut your arms off. Um, basically, Sebastian, I gave the those are not ours upgrade, um, and my plan is basically to give me extra dogs. He's got this rule, man's best friend, where he can summon a canine remains in base contact with a target corpse marker, discording the corpse marker for a one action. So that's pretty awesome, because uh, as you see, a zero action, evidence tampering, sacrifice a friendly undead model and add a soul stone, or add a soul stone to the soul, to soul stone pool and draw a card. So basically, um, Yeah, if one of my guys, say my punk zombies or my hounds, are releasing, like getting close to zero wounds, I can kill them, give myself a soul stone and a card, and then turn the corpse marker into a hound for one action. Just like that. Just, what the fuck? Here's another hound. Uh, and also, I will get into later that the hounds can actually, for a two action, dig up a bone. I'll, I'll just show you it now. So, uh,. Where we got here. Found a bone for two actions. Basically, they can just stand there for the turn and plop out a corpse marker, which is awesome. Which means that the next person to activate would then be Sebastian and turn that corpse marker into another doggy. So, in other words, I can run some doggies up there and they can just sit there and pop out more doggies, which is wicked. 
not to mention the fact that um, with McMorning's upgrades now, when I expunge you, you turn into a, a doggy. So, <laughs> either way, I'm going to have lots of doggies running around. I'm going to have lots of doggies running around. Um... So yeah, uh, basically I think that's worth a soul stone, um, especially because I can use that card to give myself more soul stones later in the battle. So it basically I use it once and it's made made up for itself and I get an extra card to help me. So it's just, it's wicked good. I think that's going to be awesome. I think between Sebastian and McMorning I'm going to have a lot of dogs running around. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, Next, I am going to add in two canine remains. I'm actually going to pay for the two canine remains because we have to start with a sum. So, like I said, uh, they can do a charge for one AP, which is wicked cool as long as this chihuahua has already just been near a dude, which is <laughs> wicked awesome. Uh, so he runs up, poison the enemy, everybody within two inches, and then these two puppies working together can then charge in for a one action, and because there's two of them, you get a negative one to your defense, because it would be for one every additional, right? Let, let, let's read the actual rule. What's the point in guessing when I have the card right in front of me? Enemy models receive negative one defense while within one inch of this model. Oh. Okay, so it's negative one just for being near one. I don't even have to use them together and you get a negative one. Having two of them, you automatically get a negative two to your defense, and that making <laughs> their attacks... Uh, much more effective, which means they're likely going to add more poison to you. So this guy runs up in your face, you get two poison just for being near him. Then these guys get to charge at you with one action. At negative two to your defense. Uh, well, I guess one would charge in at negative one, and then the second one would have to activate after um, to charge in at negative two. But even still, both of them, after charging, can do yet another attack to hopefully give you even more poison. And then just being near McMorning and Sebastian, will hopefully expunge you for a zero action, and then at the end of the turn you will take three more poison, well, damage from the three poison, so hopefully between two poison he gave you and maybe two or three that these guys gave you, I can make you die from these three. Especially for weaker models. I think it's going to be a wicked awesome strategy. And like I say, these canine remains don't have to charge in. They can just sit there, plop out two corpse markers, and then Sebastian can turn those two corpse markers into two more doggies. Boom. They just pop out, just like that. How freaking crazy is that, right? Awesome. So anyway, as far as actually paying soul stones, I'm going to start with two. And then hopefully throughout the battle, I can summon in one, two, three, four, and a flesh construct. Those are just in the background for summoning, based on McMorning's upgrades and Sebastian's upgrades, plus the fact that the doggies can poop out corpse markers. Which is, wow, like I'm just like, wow, corpse markers everywhere, bad guys turning into flesh constructs or more doggies, these corpse markers turning into doggies, poisons everywhere, when you activate, you're getting poisoned. This guy's got a zero action, it's gonna make you take all your poison damage at once. This guy, just at the end of the turn, it's gonna make you take a three instead of one. It's just, it's just insane. Uh, it's, it's nuts. Just poison, poison, poison. Puppies, puppies, puppies. I think this is gonna be <laughs> wicked awesome, actually. Next, I'm adding in just one nurse. Just one. Because again, I'm not entirely sure the optimal use for the nurses. Um, not entirely sure how to optimize them, but I like this uh, sculpt better than the other sculpt. So I think more likely than not, I'm going to be using this sculpt because she is super sexy and she's got a gigantic syringe, which is awesome. So comic book. Um, so what I have gathered from the reason I want to incorporate at least one is that uh, they can be great support for my crew, apparently. And uh, with the help of Take Your Meds, it can apparently be used on your friends and your enemies. So, also, if I need uh, 
she can run up and stick the enemy with her syringe, giving you plus four poison. Wow, plus four poison. Means this guy runs up, he gives you two. She runs up, she fights you, she gives you a poison. And then if you try and fight her back, she, which I noticed in the last battle, I didn't even realize until we were actually playing the game last time, that she has this hands-off rule, which means after this model is damaged by an attack, it can push four inches in any direction, which basically means that I run in, I give you four poison, you try to hit me back, and I go, nah, get your hands off me, and run back, basically. And then McMorning and Sebastian are just hanging out, and he goes, um, I feel like using a zero action that's going to kill you, and then you die, and you become a corpse marker, and then next turn he goes, I'm going to turn that corpse marker into a doggy. Hey, there's more doggies on the field, which are going to give you even more poison. <laughs> uh, this is turning out to be my Nurgle summoning army all over again. I love it. Um, so not only do I have five models off the field that I can summon in throughout the course of the game, hopefully I can get all five of these guys to actually come in on top of all this, but uh, basically I've just got that nurse there to support um, and heal my flesh construct or, you know, give some extra abilities or just give me some extra poison. I mean, really, with this crew it seems the more poison the better and the more doggies the better, so I hope I have enough stuff going on here that I can get... I think I think these synergies are working. I think I'm on the right track here. If I am, let me know. If I'm not, let me know, guys. And if you want to suggest anything further, I am all open to suggest suggestions. We're still learning this game, so again, I'm not going to be offended if you say, um, "Yeah, dude, that's not going to work on the tabletop," it, or "It's not going to work in this scheme or that scheme." Please let me know that stuff. That's why I'm putting this out here. I want to kick Adam's butt. Okay, that's the bottom line. I want to kick those arcanists' butts. And you guys are going to help me do that. So this is it so far. Um, we're not quite there yet. Um, where am I at? Okay, so that's pretty much the crew so far. But we still haven't filled out our 50 soul stones yet. So finally, I'm going to be adding my three punk zombies. Because they're awesome. I would love to use them in every single game. Because they are just wicked cool models. Plus, I loved painting them. Um, and they're just incredibly awesome so uh, as far as game wise that uh, again I've never used them so all I can do is basically like read the cards and figure out how they would be used but basically it seems that they're like melee monsters not only are they hard to wound but they're also hard to kill plus they can slice up not just one model in their two inch melee range but for one AP they can slice all models within a three inch melee range so basically if the enemy surrounds any of these guys they can just flip their swords all over the place and hit every guy around them crazy just crazy they literally are samurais samurai punk zombies it's nuts plus if they're already in melee range at the start of their activation then they can take three attacks for two ap instead of two which is wicked good uh, which I th think and I hope will make them a priority for Adam to take out. Because once I get these guys up to you, uh, I think they're just going to slice through all kinds of stuff. Like Captain's Hammer's got nothing on these guys. Um, so, all this here adds up to 47 soul stones. So with McMorning's uh, cachet of 4, that leaves me 7 soul stones to play with. And as I said, I can take this guy and like just add extra soul stones to my pool, which is wicked cool. But uh, I think I'm going to need the, at least the seven to get started because there's a lot of triggers here that I'm going to have to get off at the right time. So I'm going to need to be adding suits and stuff like that, I think, in order to use these guys to the best of my ability, especially if I want to summon these five guys back here. But basically, that only happens when an enemy dies, and hopefully those Arcanists will be dying all over the place. I'll be able to turn them into puppies and Frankenstein monsters. So, uh, yeah, that gives me enough extra stuff to f summon in four hounds and a flesh construct on top of this wicked cool crew that you see right here. I think I'm on to a good start here, guys. 
Um, you can let me know whether I am or aren't, whether I've got these rules right or wrong. Let me know if I am maximizing these to the best of their synergy, or if I'm totally way off. I don't know. Again, I haven't played a game with this crew outlined like this, but I'm pretty sure this is what I'm bringing to the next battle report. So you guys can let me know if that's smart, if that's stupid, if there's anything else maybe I should add to this that I already have. So of course I have Nicodem as well, if you think I should change out Masters again. I don't think I can maximize out um, his summoning capabilities with just these models here, but uh, whatever, it is what it is. Plus I have another nurse, which isn't depicted here right now. That's the model pool I'm working with, so you guys can help me out, let me know if I'm on the right track, if I'm not, whatever, please leave a comment below. So that's what I got guys, so you guys can comment below, hopefully let me know if there's anything I've gotten wrong, if anything I'm not seeing. Uh, maybe even some advice, you veteran players who have played uh, McMorning Crew before, and or those of you who have experience with the Canine Remains and those kinds of things, just let me know in the comments below, please. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, it always helps us out, and uh, support us on Patreon. So, until our next encounter. <laughs>